guys, how's it going? Emulator Lord here, and today we're going to be doing an updated video for the Delphin Emulator Best Settings and Configuration. So, uh, first off, I'd like to say before we start the video, I went to my DX tag. This is not the exact same build that I used, I don't know, uh, about a year or two years ago for my last video. I've now updated, I am using an Intel Pentium uh, G3258 processor, also known as the Anniversary Edition of Pentium. So the Haswell architecture runs very, very cold, low wattage, and it's got impeccable performance. Absolutely beautiful. Runs at uh, 3.2 gigahertz dual core. I do have this overclocked though. Yeah, I did this in my BIOS, but I also use throttle stop to have like a all-time demand for 4.3 gigahertz. Uh, so a little bit of an overclock there, but really it doesn't make a difference. I tried it without the overclock, and the emulators work smooth like butter man it's absolutely amazing so alright now that we're uh, done that here I also have the display for a uh, brand new uh, R9 270 graphics card it's got two gigabytes of GDDR5 and for the price of $200 it is well worth it I can play all my games as you can see here I have Steam and Steam I have about 179 games it runs all of them smooth they, anywhere from 45 to 60 frames per second, 1080p, high to ultra settings. Uh, that does include games like Crisis 2, Battlefield 3, uh, let's see what else, Resident Evil 6, um, and any of the Call of Duties really. So uh, now that we're done that here, we're going to go into the Dolphin Emulator. Um, I was going to use one of the uh, custom builds, the ICC or uh, the Intel AMD build, anything like that, but They've gone out of style now. Uh, nobody's making them since the Dolphin version 3.0. So what I'm going to do here is I download the uh, Dolphin 4.0.2. That's the one that I got off the Dolphin website. Um, it is their stable release, so it doesn't have any configuration issues. It doesn't have any people modding to it, anything like that. This is their stable release, their latest one. Um, and I did choose Resident Evil 1 as my game for the GameCube just because um, I was talking online with somebody in the comments on my last video and uh, he was wondering what settings do we need to use for Resident Evil 1. He was having trouble with the configuration, getting good frame rates or whatever. I didn't get into specifics with it. But um, for uh, this guy, here you go, Foxhound member, this is for you. Um, so we're going to go into the graphics settings first. Uh, Personally, I used to use D3 uh, Direct 3D9 all the time. I swore by it pretty much, but now that there's later builds, um, it actually is better performance and yields less issues to use Direct 3D11. So we're going to choose that. Um, obviously, if you have a graphics card, it's going to come up with uh, the basic render driver or whatever it is first. Uh, always choose your graphics card. Please always choose your graphics card. You're going to be running off of your CPU. And really, unless you have an APU, it's not worth it. So choose that for your display. I am personally running at 1920 by 1080, full 1080p uh, resolution. I'm using a TV actually to run my computer. But um, if you guys have a lower grade graphics card, so I'm guessing you know a 650 Ti, a Radeon 6450, a uh, 7770 graphics card, anything like that, I'd recommend 1280 by 720 graphics. You're still going to get the great HD performance and uh, quality, but you're not going to lose frame rates from going into 1080. Also, you're going to be in a full screen mode, so you're going to have the entire screen. You shouldn't have any block edges, nothing like that. Um, also, if you're playing GameCube games, you really need to force the 16 by 9. That is a big thing, because if you go into auto or 4x3, you're going to have a square and you're going to have a uh, you're going to have two black bars pretty much like from there and from over here it's going to be black nothing there so it's sort of stupid 416 by 9 and personally I like to show the frames per second especially when I'm doing videos like this just to prove to you guys that yes this is the 30 frames that if there is lag it is from the video recorder it is not from my game um, I have tried this game out, not very far, but I tried it a bit, and I ran everything at a full 30 frames like it's supposed to. And when you open up doors to go to the next room, it switches to 60 frames, but after that, back to 30. So, keep your V-Sync off. Vertical Sync is really if you have a good graphics and a very good CPU. 
if you're running off a dual core CPU, you really don't want to do anything like that just because you're going to lose your frame rates. And you know what? For a little bit of screen tearing, it's really not bad. Uh, for enhancements, I like, because I have a good graphic card, I really like to put uh, the times 3 native resolution. But for most people, auto window size or auto multiple works really well. So I'm just going to keep mine at 3 just because that's what I'm stable with. I can run all my games on it. I like to keep my anti-aliasing off just because I'm not sure how my graphics card runs with it yet. I will be doing some more configurations with it, playing around, tweaking it, but for most people, keep it on none. As for the uh, anisotropic filtering, I like to keep that up at 16. It really doesn't affect performance at all, and it smooths your edges. So less blocky textures, uh, and you don't lose quality or performance. Also. Uh, when you first open Dalton, the uh, scaled EFB copy will be on. Keep it on. It'll just uh, improve your performance when you're loading textures. Uh, for the hacks, I'd leave this all off for right now. And for the advanced, don't touch it unless you know what you're doing. I really don't want to get into it right now, but um, I don't know. You should just leave it. <laughs> all right, so now that we're done that, for the configuration tab here, right here, da ba ba. You want to, honestly, if you're using the Dolphin 4.0.2, leave this on auto, because after 3.5, everything decided that, here, if we put a game on at, that runs at 60 frames, it will run at 60. It's not going to move to 30 frames because it's a GameCube game or something like that. It's going to stay at 60. The older builds used to have problems with that, where if you put it at auto, all of a sudden 60 frame games would run at 30 frames, and it would mess you up, it would run slow, blah, blah, blah. It's really stupid, but they finally fixed that. So just keep it on auto. The interface you can change around, do whatever you want. The audio, I pretty much left it, except for I changed my volume to 30% just to hear me. Uh, the GameCube, I just put the standard controller in. And for the configuration here for the GameCube, I just use a Xbox controller and configured it down with the basic buttons A to A, B to B, X to X, Y to Y, all that stuff. So now that everything is set up, I'm going to show you some gameplay. Oh, that's a lot of talking. I just took some Buckley's, man. I'm sick as shit. But that stuff cleared me up, man. Tastes like ass, though. Absolutely disgusting. So as you, three, as you can see right here, the opening, 30 frames per second, stable. We're going to load this up. I'm going to have to go to a new game. Who should we choose? Alright, let's do mountain climbing. Alright, so we can either be Chris, you know, before he got really tank and became a gorilla, or we can play as Jill. Let's play as Jill. Alright. Once again, solid 30 frames per second. I do get minor dips, I'm going to keep that in mind here for you guys. I do dip down to about 24, 25 frames for the first couple seconds of a transition of a screen. But after that, I'm at 30 frames. It usually doesn't happen when I'm just playing by myself without a recording. But with the recording, because I'm in 1080p 60 frames per second recording, it really sort of lags me out. But um, hopefully this thing performs well for us. There are only three stars in Elith But all right, uh, yeah, see what I mean? It goes to 10, 27, and then to 30. And here, 60 frames per second only when you're opening the doors. After the doors, everything should be fine. So, as you can see here, everything looks absolutely beautiful. Running at 30 frames, and, uh, oh, I forgot to mention, when you're in the, uh, the options to choose, like, your anti aliasing and everything, you will see a widescreen hack. It works for some games, but personally, do I do not put it on especially for this game, just because you'll see these flames here that are right here. This flame will be over here, this one will be over here, this one will be over here, this one will be over here, blah, blah, blah. And you know what? It's, it looks like shit's going on fire. And you know what? You sort of get confused because you're walking around the house and you're like, oh shit, am I setting someone on fire? What am I doing here? Like, this scares the shit out of me sometimes. Especially if you're on drugs. Like, I'm not saying I do drugs, but if you do drugs, that's going to scare the fuck out of you, man. You'd be like, oh my god, the whole place is on fire. Ah! freak the fuck out. So, 
I'm just gonna show you the first zombie here. And for all of you that have played the original, you guys remember this scene. This scared the shit out of me when I was little. I remember playing this with my dad back in like 97, 98 ish, I believe. And oh my god, this was the scariest scene. This thing absolutely was terrifying. It scared the shit out of me, maybe not sleep. And for the graphics time, I mean, like, looking back on it, the graphics, you're like, oh my god, how did this scare me? But, like, I mean, I was scared originally of playing, you know, the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time because I get to the first boss and I, at that time I was absolutely terrified of spiders. I wouldn't even give them a chance. So, I mean, when that thing falls from the sky and it's a big fucking spider with, you know, one giant eye that you have to slash, I turned the console off. I said, fuck it, I'm done. But, you know, that's not, we're not talking about Zelda right now, we're talking about Resident Evil. But for Resident Evil, everything is running fine, smooth 30 frames. Like I said, when you do the transition, you drop down to about 24, 25 frames, but everything for the most part is fine. But, uh, alright, so we're going to exit out of this. And, uh, I'd just like to say thank you guys for all of your support, you know, I know it's been a long year, year and a half for us, uh, since I've made a video. I, you know, I haven't been making replies or anything like that, I ended up losing my account. But, um, I am back, I'm going to be doing a lot more videos. Um, I am going to be coming out with an actual uh, a video on the best price performance uh, computer you can buy uh, for parts obviously, not for laptops or anything like that or pre-builds. This is for buying your own computer parts, putting it together and making a emulator machine or a gaming rig. The prices are going to range from about $400 to $600 and uh, let me know what you guys think, but I will definitely try and help you guys all out with everything I can, trying to get you guys the best frame rates. If you guys have any questions about games, let me know and I'll try and get them. But um, thank you guys so much and I'll be posting some videos later. Let me know if you need help in the comment section below and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks. Bye.